Hi, everyone. Hello. Welcome to the month of April. That, yes, it is April. And we realized it's been a little while since we did a hot-ish take. That's right. Which fits with the theme because we don't believe in hot takes. No. We want to be able to analyze and sit and listen to other wise voices. Yeah. Think about things. And over the last couple weeks, one of the things that we have been thinking the most about is a trial in Northern Ireland. Really briefly before we get into the trial, a quick reminder that Northern Ireland is a separate legal country from the Republic of Ireland. So on the island of Ireland, there are two countries. Northern Ireland, which is the tippity tippity top, is part of the United Kingdom. And therefore, as we're going to be talking about a trial, we're talking about the Royal Courts of Justice. Yes. The Republic of Ireland is its own thing. The reaction to this particular trial has been around the island. The whole island. The particular defendants in this trial are celebrities on the whole island. Yes. But the trial itself took place in Belfast because the incident in question took place in June of 2016 yes. in Belfast. We're going to be talking about a rape trial and rape culture and misogyny and patriarchy. Yes. If any of those things are triggers for you, if that is not something you feel like listening to two women rant about today, now is the time yes. to look away. <laughs> you, have, you have been warned. You have been warned. Uh, and one of the reasons we're talking about this is that we are a little bit surprised that the particular reactions to this and some of the public discourse around the trial has not left the island. Um, that people in England, Scotland, Wales, and even the United States are not talking about this because yeah. it's a pretty striking case right. um, with a lot of lessons that need to be learned on a couple different um and planes. Is, yeah, and issues of celebrity and privilege mm -hmm. and sexual assault, particularly legal cases that come from these issues, are not something that we are unfamiliar with. And we certainly have a history of them in the United States, so it was surprising to both Dr. Donnelly and I that even though many people might not know a lot about rugby in Ireland, it was still one of these high-profile cases taking place. Yeah, and it took place for eight weeks. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to turn this over to Dr. Hinson. She's going to give you a quick rundown, and then we're going to talk about the culture in which this um, occurred. Right. So what you need to know about this case, as Dr. Donnelly said, it took place in Northern Ireland. The original uh, complaint happened of the incident in June of 2016. Last summer, the um, Public Prosecution Service in Northern Ireland determined there was enough evidence to pursue uh, charges against four young men who have been accused of rape, uh, sexual assault, exposure, and perverting the course of justice. Two of these young men were members and are still members, uh, although suspended currently, of the Ulster Rugby team, which rugby is a big thing in Ireland, in Europe, particularly on the island of Ireland. It is a professional sports team um, that plays internationally, and they are also members of the international team for Ireland that represents the nation of Ireland. So, like, playing for Team USA, same thing. These guys are members of the Irish rugby team. Mm -hmm. So, the, case, the court case took place over the last eight weeks. We heard from all four defendants. We heard from all four of their lawyers who spent eight days eight days asking questions of the def complainant, the young woman who was involved in this case. She did everything that you are required to do. Supposed to do. Supposed to do, quote unquote, leading up to this that led to enough evidence. She went to a rape uh, crisis center. She had DNA evidence taken. She gave on several accounts, multiple accounts to the police. So all of this evidence built up. All of this was brought out through the trial repeatedly. Her underwear was shown. Evidence from her uh, assault, uh, her rape kits, and her physical examinations were talked about at length. Uh, and she was also asked really upsetting questions from our perspective by the lawyers representing the defendants, including... Uh, asking her to defend what she was wearing, 
how much she drank, how she behaved, whether she liked rugby, uh, whether she was attracted to celebrities. All of these things were made to um, cast doubt on these accusations. Mm -hmm. Uh, that was covered widely in the media every day. Uh, what was taking place in the courtrooms was repeated back to the people who were paying attention. Mm -hmm. So what happened was last Tuesday, all four young men were found not guilty. On all counts. On all counts. Mm -hmm. This was a legal process that has taken up almost two years mm -hmm. of investigation. And it was an eight-week trial, and the jury deliberated, a jury of... Nine men and three women. Correct. Nine men and three women, which is a deal. It's a big deal. Deliberated for three hours and 45 minutes. So clearly there are um, some concerns with this. Um, not only as people who spend a lot of our time um, having conversations with businesses where harassment is a conversation, yeah. um, as women... Um, as rugby fans, yeah. as people who love the island, mm -hmm. um, this has been something that has occupied a lot of our brain. I should say before Kristen gets into a bit more about this, there were wide scale protests immediately yeah. following, which is part of the reaction that we're going to bring into this mm -hmm. discussion uh, across the island of Ireland, mm -hmm. not just in Belfast, but protests the day after and this past weekend, lots of commentary on social media about how the case was handled, mm -hmm. how it was represented in the media, mm -hmm. and how the justice systems in both the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland, which are separate jurisdictions, but how the justice systems handle rape cases. Correct. So why is this important in the big picture in Ireland? So Kristen. one of the first and loudest protests that came is that the justice system itself is not fit for purpose which is a super Irish phrase, um, <laughs> to handle these kind of conversations. And that makes complete sense to us. Of course it's not. Yeah. Because um, a couple things didn't ever happen. There was no training for the jury on what consent is and what it isn't. There was no conversation about um, really, even to the barristers themselves, used really, really what we in America understand as super outdated defenses. Um, if, I mean, we're not great. Don't get me wrong. But there are a couple of the things that were said. Um, when I talked to my lawyer friends, the judge would have told them to strike that from the record. The judge would have told the jury to ignore that. She and that was, yeah. she did as, as good as good as she could. No. no, but I mean, they asked her why she didn't scream. Yeah, and they asked her, they pretty much, they also blamed the girls who were in the apartment below her for not coming up and for, saving her. For not recognizing um, what was allegedly taking place. It was very, very problematic. And our concern with that is that um, it is... It is absolutely, like, nothing causes sexual violence but the person perpetrating the sexual violence. Nothing causes um, a lack of consent except a lack of consent. A lack of consent. Uh, and so we have a couple questions. Yep, we do. Uh, and we're not alone in asking those questions. We are not. Hey, um, ladies. And, and we, gents. And gents. Lots, lots, of, lots of men contributing to this. We have, um, these are hard conversations to have. Yeah. And one of the reasons that they are hard conversations to have is that the belief that women are somehow less than men and men are the preferred standard of human behavior is baked into the culture in both the North and the South. Yeah. Um, and so from here on out, I'm going to use the phrase Irish culture um, because yeah. Yeah, you can. I mean, you can. And British culture. They, and yeah. Western culture. Yeah, all of those And things. all of those things in this conversation mean the same thing. Mm -hmm. Because as much as there are differences between that island and the land we live in now, this is not one of them. So when academics say the term rape culture, what we mean is not that rape happens every single day and is, per and is encouraged. What we, what we say is that the culture permits it. Mm -hmm. Um, that we ask questions about what she's wearing, what 
did did he was he drunk when we're talking mm-hmm. about male male survivors um what the vic- the blame is always placed upon in the victim mm-hmm. in rape culture um we want to remind you again that rape is not ever about sexual attraction it is entirely about power and control yeah. um so all of these factors Ireland's a rape culture well, one of the other problematic things in Northern Ireland and in the Republic of Ireland is that there is no compulsory sexual health education. So, Amazing. um, there is, it's a, it's an option of the schools to bring it in. And I say that as somebody who did that. My very first job out of college was to teach sex ed in Northern Ireland. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a really fun job. Lots of stories. Um, and there were a lot of myths that we spent a lot of time debunking. Things like I met a lad who thought that he could use a potato chip bag as a condom because the salt would kill the sperm. <laughs> the salt. Sorry, uh-huh. I forgot that part. Of uh-huh. The story continue. Yeah. Um, people who thought if you jumped up and down after sex, the sperm would fall out. Mm-hmm. Um, people who thought if you had sex in the dark, the sperm couldn't find their way to the eggs. What about stilettos? What's oh yeah, there was one lad who That's swore that if um, a woman wore stilettos, the sperm would be afraid of the stilettos. I appreciate how much agency he gave to his sperm. I mean, yeah. like, that's intense. Yeah. And the power of stilettos. Wow. Um, I sat with weeping students who found themselves pregnant because they didn't know that you could get pregnant if you kept your underwear on. There is a lack of um, basic understandings. I, I talked to women who were holding babies and couldn't identify the parts of the female reproductive system to me. That's the case in the United States, too. We have major problems. There should be compulsory relationship education, top to bottom, North Pole to South Pole. Um, But in this particular culture, one of the, this particular intersection of cultures that exist on that island, um, all of them are very baked with an intersection of class and religion that is, is a little bit unique to that particular place. And we talk about sex in a shameful way. We talk about sex in, like, it was revolutionary to some of the youth groups I went to, to talk about the fact that sex was meant to be fun. Yeah. Um, and certainly that's in the Southern United States. Some of you have yeah. read my research on rape culture among Southern evangelicals. So it's in the United States too. Yes. So don't think that we're, we're praising the U.S., But what we want to talk about with Ireland is, first of all, that it's small enough, both north and south, um, it's small enough that change can happen quickly. Yes, it is. Yeah. Um, It's small enough that decisions can get made quickly. You can get a lot of the key decision makers around a table real fast. In the age of the internet, we can start having these conversations over mediums like this. We're having a conversation right now. And it is a place that values family so deeply. And one of the really ugly and insidious parts of Irish and British rape culture in particular is that it lets men believe that the women who are victims are different than the women they're related to. And it allows people to create a hierarchy of womanhood and a hierarchy of malehood um, that is crap. A load of crap. So we want to... um, We may not seem angry to you, I just realized. This is not so much of a rant, but I think we've sat in this for long enough, and I think for both Dr. Donnelly and I, we go through phases about this particular case. Yep. Um, And we are very grieved as as to what is happening. So I think more than an angry rant on a hottest This is a mournful rant. This is a mournful rant for the state of... Irish culture specifically in this case, but the existence and the prevalence of rape culture and the patriarchy and misogyny and sexism and assault and violence and all of these things. We throw around all those words a lot. We do. But what they all mean is that a group of people heard a woman tell a jury that she said no. Many times. Many times. Too many people. She said no many times. She submitted herself to a SANE exam, um, which if you've never seen what a SANE exam is, if you've never gone through it, I would recommend getting your hands on the very first episode of the third season of Broadchurch, which is a British drama 
and the third season yes. takes around a sexual assault and they painstakingly go through what a SANE exam is. Um, sexual assault nurses exam, by the way. Um, and it is, it can be for many, many women. Yes. We have been told re-traumatizing. It's, it's not a small decision. It's very invasive and can feel, can feel to a lot of people very violating and intrusive. But the jury's job was to decide without any doubt. If there was a modicum of doubt that she was okay with it, the law said that they had, that to, they had to acquit. They had to acquit them. We're never going to hear from the jurors, which we shouldn't, because the law should protect them too. This was complicated for them. Yeah. Um, but think about that. Think about a legal system that is so built on the fact that women are less than, that women's bodies are property, that w the alleged things that happened to her based on both her WhatsApp messages, their WhatsApp messages, the, it, the testimonies of the other people, report. the police report, the taxi driver who took her home, all of these reports are, guys, it's ugly stuff that allegedly really, happened really grievous, violent, ugly stuff. Really upsetting. And the legal system is built that if, if anywhere in the realm of imagination, those, those 11, 12 jurors could believe that she wanted it at any point, at any point. So her agency for saying no, as things got out of hand, for instance, if that's for what instance. happened, I don't know. I wasn't there. Um, that didn't, con that, that didn't, didn't continue. do anything. There is no understanding that legally there is legally, no understanding there is no understanding that consent can be removed. There's no wiggle room to understand that at any point in time consent can be removed. Can, consent can be removed. So I'm going to pause on that for a minute and then say what we call what we call for. Yes. I want you to remember that consent can be removed anytime, anytime in any situation, either partner, any activity. You can, um, this is one of the fun things about, um, the world that we live in right now is that we're having these really hard conversations. Um, but I want to remind you that in most states, spousal rape in the United States was allowed until the late nineties. Yeah. Um, I've been married for five years. When I say no to my husband, he stops. There is, what's it like 30 states or something that where it's acceptable for police officers yeah. to have sex with people they have in custody. Mm -hmm. So long as they say. So long as they say. The police say. The police say. It was consensual. We have a lot of things. We have a lot of things around sexual assault that are not built for purpose. Yeah. Not fit for purpose because they're built on patriarchy. Mm -hmm. They're built on the belief that men are the default standard for behavior, opinions, and power. And women, therefore, are less than. And when we start doing intersections of race, class, education, ability, it. mental acuity, yeah. it gets even messier. It gets worse. Yep. So what we call for is a dismantling of that. We want to say that we are grieved for the men in this situation as well. Um, because they were raised in a culture that taught them they are the victors. Um with, with or without the alleged activity, there is language within the WhatsApp messages that very clearly convey to both of us that what they yeah. have been taught yes. um, and reinforced over and over and over again is that they are gods and that they get to do whatever they want. And that's no way to live either. And a position of privilege that comes from heroicizing athletes mm -hmm. and celebrities mm -hmm. that feeds into a mentality that your actions are privileged. Correct. It's a big problem. It's, this is every celebrity uh, crime trial that's ever happened in the United States. Yeah. It happened on a smaller scale there. Um, we are grieved for the women. We are grieved for the young woman at the center of this who put herself in such a vulnerable position over and over and over again to continue to not feel safe. We are grieved for the parents right now who we saw on Facebook talking about that they don't know how to send their children to university right now. We are grieved for um, the sexual assault nurses who have to do this all the time. We are grieved for um, the state of the world that we have, we are still having to defend the fact that people get to say no. It's that simple. No means no. Whenever you say it. Whenever you say Whether it. Whether it's a sexual activity or a friendship or a business transaction. 
No gets to me and no. So from ARHQ on this foggy Wednesday in oh, Philadelphia. Wednesday. It's a bit morose, much like our much like our mood. much like our tone in this. Our hope for you is that you surround yourself with people who believe that you have the right to say no, who champion your uh, who champion your yes. Shout out while you say that to the Department of Education in the Republic of oh, Ireland. That's true. I almost forgot. Who I so we're at something positive. There is change that is possible, and this is the change we're talking about. So the Ireland of Ireland, Republic of Ireland government is looking at ways they can change relationship education and have been before this trial. Yeah, it's been a hot topic before this. Um, and women's health yeah. and sexual health. Yep. And they decided this week that consent education is going to be mandatory for all high school aged children in the Republic of Ireland. So Guys. big ups to change happening on the island. We can make a difference. Absolutely. And so, on that note... Fare thee well. Oh, I should say, sorry, one more false ending. This is like Return of the <laughs> King. Just, I'm so we're sorry. Just so many we're just so many things. Peter Jackson today. If this is part of your story, and you have never told anyone, or perhaps the more you're reading about sexual assault, you're realizing that something you thought was consensual wasn't. Something that happened a long time ago that you've repressed is coming out in different ways. Um, we are a safe space to talk about that. But even more importantly, there's a lot of other resources that are. In the comment section on this YouTube yep. video and in the blog that goes with it, we're going to list some both for Ireland, Northern Ireland, and the United States. Some recommended reading if this is something you would like to learn more about or understand better. But we'll also include a link to a phone call for, with us. Um, because we believe you. We believe women. And we want to listen. Talk to you later. Take care, everybody. Bye.